let's talk about different types of staging. And more specifically, there's two main types I really want to cover today. There's discharge air, also, you know, maybe abbreviated to DAT, but you also have another form in the comfort side that we don't use very often, if hardly ever, but it is still there and it used to be used a lot more than it currently is. And that is suction pressure staging. Before we get into that, I want to give a shout out to True Tech Tools. I've really enjoyed the partnership with those guys. 8% off with uh, HVAC time is your promo code. Uh, just please go check them out. If you need any kind of tech support help or training, or maybe you need a consultation on a specific situation you're dealing with, feel free to check out my website on the uh, forward slash tech support, and that will get you uh, directly in touch with me, or you can reach out via email, however you like to do it. I've also started doing really well with it through like Instagram Messenger. So I'm here to help. I'm willing to help. And if you're willing to contribute to uh, everything I've got going on here, maybe by getting on the uh, tech support subscription, be appreciated. So on the comfort cooling side, you know, the most common thing we're familiar with would be like a discharge air temperature uh, staging, which means that we're trying to achieve a set discharge air. We've got a large RTU, for example, and we want a 55 degree leaving air all the time. So we're going to turn on and off compressors despite the circuits based off of that leaving air. So if that leaving air temperature begins to rise, that means we need to bring more compressors in to cool it back down and we'll do so and vice versa going the other way. It's a fairly straightforward concept, I feel like, and I think all of us are fairly used to it by this point. But there's another concept where we use the suction pressure in order to do this, and that used to be a lot more common, and we did it through the uh, the suction unloaders on like the old recip style compressors. They had little unloader valves on them that we don't really deal with very much in, anymore. Uh, technically, uh, we do have like carrier phased into the electronic unloaders, with the um, little coil systems that would plug in and it would be based off of discharge air but before those when they were all mechanical they would load and unload the uh, heads on the compressor based off of suction temp and so this technology has been around and it used to be a lot more prevalent than it is today but I want to talk about it because it does still exist and it does still happen and I had a job recently where it ended up being the better option because of the design parameters I had on site more like the issues I had with the unit working like it was supposed to, but I'll get into that. One concept I want to point out right out the gate is suction pressure does track with the actual load itself. So as load goes up, suction pressure is going to follow with it when we keep the compressors consistent. So it does the inverse on the other way around. So the, the more the load drops, the suction pressure is going to drop with that load. Now keep in mind, suction pressure itself is nothing more than just a way of saying saturation. So as load goes up, our saturation goes up. As load comes down, saturation follows it. So taking you through a loading cycle specifically, uh, let's say we had a morning startup. Uh, it was 70 degrees that morning on the return air, and it was fairly cool outside. We didn't have a lot of load on the building. So as the load comes up throughout the day, the return air temperature is going to slowly climb. As that return air climbs, you know, the uh, ideally the boxes in the space, let's say this was a VAV type system, they're going to slowly require more air because the whole space is going to start warming, which is represented by the return air. As all that's happening, what that means is that evaporator is getting more and more load applied to it. Eventually, that load's going to start to come up or our suction saturation is going to start to run really, really high with just one compressor on. Let's say we have three compressors in the circuit. So we're going to have a suction set point, meaning that when we, instead of paying attention to what our leaving air temperature is, we're going to have it to where we want to maintain our suction pressure below this value. Let's say it's 410A and our suction set point was 120 PSI. So at that point, once we got above 120 PSI for just say 30 seconds, and let's say we had uh, just a really tight dead band window, then it would automatically stage up the next compressor. And so that compressor would come on and it'd pull the suction pressure back down. And the, the result of doing this is yes, our discharge air temperature would drop. And obviously we're gonna be pulling more heat out of the system. And 
So the discharge air would be less consistent, but we would still be able to monitor and track the load. So as that continues throughout the day, eventually let's say everything heats up enough to where now we need that third compressor because when the second compressor came in, the suction pressure may have went from 120 to 110, for example. As that day went on, the load builds, we got back above 120, the third compressor kicks in, brings us down just a little bit below that, but because of the dead band parameters we have, let's say it stages back down at 110. Now I'm gonna take you through the other side of that let's say towards the end of the day going into that evening the you know say the this particular building runs into the evening fairly well so we're gonna see it start to kind of stage back down at the end of the day uh, and let's say most of the building leaves but some of the tenants per se work long hours in their space we would see the uh, suction pressure begin to drop because the return temperature is dropping so the overall load in the building is beginning to drop return comes down, the VAVs in the space begin to close off because less air is needed in order to make the building function. And all of this leads to less load on the evaporator. Well, that makes the suction pressure drop below 110. So the three compressors stage down to two, and then that's gonna cause us to come back to say around 120-ish, and it's gonna slowly drop back down further the more the load reduces in the space. And eventually we just cycle back down to one compressor until say we kill it on start-stop schedule. It doesn't matter. But that would be the overall staging cycle. And that's how we do it kind of electronically now. That's a modern version, and I have have, you know a hundred ton split systems that run in together and this is how we're controlling them in the older days the suction the mechanical suction unloaders would just they had little spring actions in them when the suction pressure got above a certain value it would kick out and engage the head and bring uh, yeah bring the, the refrigerant in and start pumping more because the load was up and then when it sensed that the pressure got back below that trigger point for the springs and the, and the valves in there, or the diaphragms, I should say, then it would kick back over and it would drop that head off of the recip compressor. And I'm talking about like an old Carlisle style. And then, and then it would cycle back down. And they had various forms. Now, these Carlisles weren't the only ones that used this type of unloading, but this was a very common way of doing it. Now, there is something you have to be really careful of is you can go too far one way or the other. I want to show you how I go about tuning a system like this in and deciding what parameters I go off of because you can go too high and you can go too low whenever you're trying to calibrate or tune uh, the suction pressure set points because there's not really just one size fits all but I have kind of a general starting point especially when I'm doing comfort cooling situation you know we're not talking about a process cooling I'm not talking about refrigeration those are a separate piece of the industry. So using the Danfoss Refrigerant Slider app, really recommend that one. I can say we got a 410A system and I want my baseline to be say 40 degrees of saturation. So you could use that and let's say you did a five uh, PSI differential up or down. So a total dead band of about 10 degrees. So if my low load on the space is about say 70 degrees, and I know that typically I would climb when the space is under control, I would climb to maybe about 75 on a routine day. Well, then I would expect that my saturation is gonna have about that five uh, degree variance with just one single circuit running. Now, obviously the more you bring in, the more that's gonna change, but my goal is I wanna stay as close as I can to about 40 degrees of saturation. At 40 degrees of saturation, that keeps my discharge conditions close enough to where I want them to be so that I maintain the space appropriately because obviously we have to try to keep the load processed at a, a reasonable rate. If I manually input, say five degrees additional, say 45 degrees of saturation, that puts me at 130 so I went from 118 on my physical pressure this is all in gauge and it took me to 130 pounds of pressure so I think it would be reasonable to say that if I want 40 and if I set a 5 psi uh, dead band on that then by the time I got up to a load of say my 75 degree return I would have already gone had room to stage up in the circuit the way I wanted to now something you have to be careful of and this was a scenario that I've had to recently address is if you push that suction set point too low especially with the electronic systems the mechanicals didn't have time delays right they were just they were mechanical when it dropped below that point it dropped below it and it kicked over it didn't matter how long it took but something I've had to learn the hard way with electronic style 
is there's delay timers between the staging, especially when the staging is turning compressors on and off. It is not cycling a valve per se, because you know, Aeons have electronic unloaders on them, and now they're not, or actually, Part of some of their logic as to why Aeon stages the way they do is uh, directly oriented to the uh, the suction uh, pressure. Just kind of think of it in the moment. They are an actual example of how we use suction pressure staging because what Aeon does is they have a specific saturation set point, basically the same thing I'm telling you here, that they're wanting to achieve based off of the humidity conditions inputting into the coil. So they know that, okay, if I want this level of output, then I need to cycle my compressor based off of these pressures in order to maintain a set saturation. So that is a form, a modern form of suction unloading. So in this particular case, you know, yes, I know that if it's 118, so add five to that, so it'd be 123, I would stage up a compressor. So that's seven PSI uh, below what my max load would be. But what I don't want to have happen, and I and this is what I ran into with these, uh, these York split system condensers, the circuit two, the second compressor uh, is twice the size of the single compressor. Uh, so there's that, that circuit has two compressors, you know, a, a large one and one twice that size, whereas circuit one has three all evenly sized. There's a lot more refined control when staging up circuit one and it doesn't have any issues on low ambient days. But when circuit two tries to stage up because of how I had it and I was working on commissioning this system and this is just part of that process, but as circuit two staged, every time that big compressor would come in, it was just way too much. But I also noticed that circuit one, or I'm sorry, the compressor one on circuit two would uh, run a naturally higher uh, saturation or pressure on the EVAP just by pure design. You know, they're all designed the same, but based off of variances in charge and metering valves and just all the little things, they're going to have slightly different characteristics. And so what that led to was every time uh, that compressor would come on when the load was below a certain value, the suction pressure would plummet fast enough that the suction safety would trip before the stage down delays would allow that compressor to turn off. So the correction for that was once I got my baseline, uh, I was able to find that about 140 PSI, 410A, so 140 PSI was a pretty good middle point where that circuit it would turn on and it's going to run higher for the first couple of minutes because it's got to pull the coil load down and it's got to get all the piping in the system at its operating temperature first and then after that it's going to drop a little further to respond to the literal return load only. So part of the balancing act was making it to where it wouldn't stage that compressor uh, while trying to pull the the circuit load down and then once it had done that you know it was able to kind of maintain uh, which meant I needed needed to set the pressure higher. That's part of what I'm trying to explain is the suction pressure had to be raised on the set point to stage so that it would give that compressor more time to pull on the load on the coil. But if I set it too high, then during the actual load hours, when that, that return air actually gets up and we're at a load that can sustain that second compressor, that compressor might hardly ever turn on because I set that pressure set point so high that the suction hardly ever gets there unless the load, say, gets out of control. Well, at that point, it's too late. So I can't let it go too high because I'll lose the load in the building. But if I kept it too low, then when I was at a low load condition, it was going to cause the safety to trigger on that circuit, which ultimately turned into its own problems, which ought to be pretty obvious. I really hope I'm not making this sound more complicated than it is. Part of my point is to just give a basic explanation as to what it is, what's going on, and give you some general parameters to help guide you so when you walk up to a system that has this, you have a better understanding. Uh, Aeon is not the only one that does that type of thing, but that is a real example that maybe that helps you understand what Aeon's trying to do a little bit better. It is a, a modern version of just old tech. 
It's nothing new, it's nothing fancy. And that's part of why Aeons just make that constant cycling noise with my compressor. And every time I post a video about it, somebody's like, good God, the compressor sounds terrible. Well, yeah, that's just an Aeon cycling the loaders for the compressors to maintain saturation or, or suction pressure at a very specific point so that the air that's leaving that unit can be exactly where that Aeon wants it to be. Now, I haven't done refrigeration in a number of years, but I do remember that this is something that is still fairly common practice, if not the main practice, when staging systems in a, a low temp or a, a refrigeration style system, or especially process cooling. Now, there's other forms of it. You know, they also use box temp, right? So I had some systems that would have multiple compressors and you would have multiple thermostats in there for each stage, depending on the box temp, for example. But a lot of them had uh, staging based off of suction pressure. So if the suction pressure got stepped up and the heck a lot of times those were mechanical switches even at that. So just as each switch would trigger based off of that pressure, it would just bring on the next compressor and it would cycle down the same way. So that's an environment where you would see that a lot more common and everything I've really talked about today is not like the numbers aren't applicable. The base theory as to why we're staging is, but the, the it's a different application. So I'm really honing in on the, the comfort cooling and even t beyond that, this is stuff you're going to see on the, say, heavy commercial side. Uh, I wouldn't expect to run into this really at all on the light commercial side. I do appreciate Field Pulse for sponsoring this channel and really just all the support. They're a fantastic software company that's really helping, especially small businesses, bring their processes into the modern era, right? You know, just if you've not used a good or just a automated system, a, a modern digital system you can just pull up on your phone and, and get to work on, like if you've not done that or if the ones you've had you've really struggled with, I'm telling you, you're missing out in terms of your ability to just scale your business. I highly encourage you to find somebody and in, when you're looking at that somebody, you should really look at Phil Pulse call Michael, call Gabe. They'll get you taken care of over there. I appreciate your time. Thank you for sticking through this video. Hope I didn't get too twisted up. You know, it's me talking, tripping over myself. It's what I do. Pretty good at it. Keeps me in trouble all the time. So makes life interesting at minimum. But with that, make the time. MTT, just take care of your families. Be with your spouse. Take care of your kids. We're going into the summer season. For some of us, we've already started to see these things pick up and it only gets further into it from here. So I really, really encourage you to use the time while you can. For those of you who are in northerner climates or colder climates or however you want to say that, you know, enjoy your time going into summer. You know, the more I've gotten to know people, the more I've, I've learned that y'all have a slower summer and a crazy winter, right? We're just the opposite. Our winters are, well, I'm going to say not slow, but they're not absolute chaos, but our summers are be, the chaos is, doesn't quite describe it, right? Anyway, family, make the time, take the time, spend it with them, think about it. I'll see y'all later.